now 3.02 p.m. Uh, and my name is Boris Lushniak, and today I serve as the presiding co-chair or the presiding chair of this meeting. You'll hear later that we, in fact, have three co-chairs assigned to this commission. We'll probably likely be rotating this presiding position as the commission meetings go on. I'm joined by my co-chairs, Dr. Mina Brewster. Hi, Mina. Say hi to everybody. Hello. Uh, and Dr. Tosin Olatejo. Uh, from Coppin State, and, and Mina Hi, is from St. Mary's County. So the, uh, the co-chairs will be there in assisting uh, me in the flow of this meeting and also doing some presentations uh, for this commission. Um, let me uh, remind you all of why we are here. Um, the commission is tasked with a very important task, and, and I am so glad that you volunteered. I'll remind you, you are volunteers here. Uh, some of the ex officios are volunteers because of their job titles, therefore the term ex officio, but we embrace you and you are a critical feature to this commission as well. And I do also applaud you for your level of service for the good of our state, uh, but also for your volunteerism to take on this extra tasking. Uh, so we are all here as volunteers and we understand your time is precious, but also I need to remind you that the tasking of this commission is also precious. It's precious for the citizens of the state, of Maryland. It can serve as an example to the rest of the states of our Grand Union. Uh, and also, we would like to think of it uh, having potential global impact of how we look at public health. The Commission specifically is tasked with assessing and recommending improvements to the delivery of foundational public health services in Maryland. Shirley Tosin will be going through a short presentation about this legislation that created us uh, and, and talking about specifically some of our duties. Uh, we'll be divided up at some stage into work groups and we'll explore five key subject areas relevant to the mission of public health at the state level. We'll be talking about funding in one group, governance and organizational capabilities in another, workforce, data and information technology, and finally communications and public engagement. Uh, and uh, Mina will be also doing a short presentation and start discussion of the work groups and where we're at on that. Uh, our main tasking ultimately is reporting, right? It's not just meeting, discussing, working in our work groups, uh, coming up with recommendations, analyzing, uh, again, assessing, analyzing, and recommendations are a key feature. But at the end of all this, we have an obligation, as it currently stands on or before December 1st, 2024, we will submit a final report. Uh, we also are in the midst of submitting a report, an interim report that was due on December 1st, 2023. And I'll get into some of the idiosyncrasies of that. The co-chairs in fact did submit it on time. We didn't want to be late with our homework assignment. However, today we'll, we'll discuss the, uh, the interim report and actually fully accept it with some amendments that we'll provide to you. Uh, so reporting is part of what we're all about. I have to also remind you that this is a public meeting and we have followed the requirements of posting a notification of this meeting. The meeting, as I mentioned earlier, is being video recorded. Uh, and again, by your continuing continued participation in the meeting, your consent, uh, you consent to this video recording. We also ask members of the public uh, who have responded to uh, being interested in attending this meeting, uh, you are certainly welcome. Uh, next time, bring your friends and neighbors. This is a public meeting, uh, and we have uh, uh, want you to be out there and, and to be part of this, right? There's none, no hidden agendas. We are going to be a transparent commission throughout this whole process. I am, however, asking you to make sure that you do mute your microphones during the course of this meeting. I also ask commissioners themselves to mute their microphones uh, uh, unless they're speaking, you know, the usual world of, of being interrupted by somebody who forgot that their mic was on. So let's try to make sure that we pay attention to that. Um, the meeting does not include, and I'll emphasize this again, this meeting does not include a time period for public comments, and we will not, in fact, be monitoring the chat box for public comments. We, however, encourage public co comments. Did you hear that again? We encourage public comments about everything that's going on. However, the best route of communication with us at this point in time is send us an email with your public comments. Uh, and the email will be listed, uh, but let me tell you right off the bat, it's md, like the state of Maryland, dot c-o-p-h, little o, that's 
the, the uh, Commission on Public Health, C-O-P-H, at Maryland.gov. So we do have an email address that is live. If you have com public comments, please, please, we do want to hear from you. Um, individuals who serve on this commission are subject to Maryland public health ethics laws. Uh, as all of us had filled out an application of interest to be on this committee, we filled out some information regarding that, and we have affirmed our agreement to follow public ethics laws uh, and in their applications, and we listed any conflicts of interest as uh, part of our application process. I am going to also mention specifically the commissioners, uh, always the sensitive issue of attendance at these meetings. Uh, attendance requirements for individuals appointed by the governor, and yes, all of us have the fancy letter suitable for framing signed by Governor Westmore uh, that puts us on, the, on this commission, but that comes with an obligation of attendance. And, and this is in fact outlined in state government article section 8-501 of the Annotated Code of Maryland, which states that we in essence have to show up at least half of the meetings. Uh, uh, so basically, we will be reporting attendance of each of the individuals. We'll shortly take a roll call of this, but pay attention to the idea that we will list out a whole year's worth of uh, meetings uh, for 2024. Please get them on your calendars. Uh, we realize that sometimes there will be a conflict, but we really are shooting for individuals to be here uh, more than 50% of the time, but certainly that is part of the requirements. Uh, oddly, ex officios don't have to be uh, privy to this uh, type of requirement, we realize by your state status alone that you will likely be here anyhow. Uh, I will now ask uh, Minda uh, Polsner, who's uh, one of our staff members, to conduct officially a roll call of the commissioners. Thanks, Boris. Um, you can just say present, and if and correct me, please, if I mispronounce your name. Dr. Gregory Branch. Present. Christopher Brandt. <laughs> Here. Dr. Mina Brewster. Present. Jean Drummond. Senator Ariana Kelly. Present. Dr. Boris Lushniak. Here. Dr. Tosin Oloteju. I'm here. Ms. Frances Phillips. Dr. Nicole Rochester. Bren, are you out there? I thought I yeah, saw you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was I was muted. Yep, I'm okay. here. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Nicole Rochester. Present. Dr. Maura Rossman. Dr. Michelle Spencer. Present. Mr. Alan Twig. Delegate. Oh, you are. Okay, thank you. Um, Delegate Heather Bagnall. Present. Dr. Nilesh Kalyanaraman. Present. Ms. Alyssa Lord. Ms. Camille Blakefall. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Minda. For the record, we do have a quorum. Uh, and thank you, Minda, for your service to this uh, uh, commission. Uh, the agenda has previously been posted and distributed to the commissioners, uh, and I'll now want to get any comments on the agenda. And if no comments, uh, we I will ask for a motion to approve the, the minutes. Any comments on the agenda as it stands? I'll make a motion. Okay, and Nilesh makes a motion for acceptance of the agenda. Any second? Second. Second. Uh, please vote with hands up in the air, and, we'll, and Minda will quickly scan. Right, Minda? You have the ability to scan through. Okay, so everybody say aye and raise your hand. We'll do a visual and an oral. Aye. Aye. For aye. aye. Anyone against accepting the agenda as it stands, lower your hands and say nay. Any abstentions? We accept the agenda as it is. Boy, that was easy, huh? Okay, uh, usually at this point, we'd have the approval of minutes, but we have no minutes and this is the inaugural meeting. Uh, I really wanted to decorate my office well, but you can see it's the sloppiness of an academic office. So there was nothing here, but I wanted to have 
you know, lots of balloons floating around. And uh, as I always say, the the release of, of you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, I used to say the release of virgin doves, but I don't think that's that's applicable anymore, you know, uh, or politically correct. But, you know, it was supposed to be a big, you know, uh, uh, welcome. But I'll do that from the heart. Once again, welcome to this commission. Welcome to the incredible work that's ahead of us and the duties that have uh, uh, we have taken on. Um, in terms of the first part of the agenda, uh, we've gone through call to order and we're now on welcome and introductions. Uh, each, uh, yes, uh, Tosin, you have raised a hand. Oh, no, I'm no. Okay. from the vote. Great. Well, you're probably just testing the raise the hand function. So folks, it does work. Thank you, Tosin, for doing that. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, we all have received the bios and those are for the public are posted on the website uh, that's associated with uh, this commission. The website as currently hosted is, and I'll verbally give this to you, it's SMCHD, St. Mary's County Health Department, smchd.org slash Commission on Public Health. And that is our website. A lot of the information regarding the agenda, uh, regarding members uh, of this committee as listed in the interim report. So everyone's bios and photographs are there. However, since this is our first meeting, uh, I do want a little time, you know, and it's always very difficult. If we were in the same room together, it'd be easier for us to curbside, to shake hands, to perhaps say hello and, 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 and welcome old friends into the mix and, and introduce ourselves to new friends. But all I'm asking you for, for, for this, and, and Minda will follow the same order. Uh, and so Minda helped me out here in terms of, of giving out people, attendees names. Um, you know, I mean, give us sort of a little bit about one minute, right? In terms of uh, what brings you here and why are you enth enthusiastic about uh, the work of this commission? And again, a maximum of one minute, but this is the best I can do in terms of us at least getting a little further beyond just the bios, right? Bios is one thing. I can tell you my life story, but I want to share with you a little bit of why I'm here. And I hope you have that same level of enthusiasm. Uh, so, Minda, please begin again with that listing. Sure. Dr. Gregory Branch. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Branch. Um, just to let you know that I'm a health officer in Baltimore County, and I've been in public health for um, quite some time, since 2006. Um, I've been boots on the ground um, through the H1N1, through Ebola, through um, um, COVID. Um, this is a whole um, kitten caboodle. So I'm very interested, um, especially in the funding aspect of this particular uh, commission. Nice to see everybody. Thank you. Christopher Brandt. Hi there, everybody. Uh, Chris Brandt. I, um, live in, in uh, Baltimore County uh, and uh, excited to be part of this commission. I, I suppose uh, I got here by way of my involvement with helping to create the um, Maryland Health Information Exchange or CRISP. Um, and uh, I'm excited for uh, all the work going on in Maryland uh, to make uh, our, our state a leader in value-based care delivery and um, the public health framework that will enable that. Thank you. Dr. Mina Brewster. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Uh, I've, uh, similar to Dr. Branch, I've been in uh, public health for some years now. I serve as a county health officer in St. Mary's County and the southern part of our state, our mother county. And uh, certainly uh, through my experience in public health, have recognized how critically important it is for us to have available and mobilize a, an effective public health system for each and every community member uh, in our state. I, I think uh, we all experienced and, and have our own opinions, but we certainly all experienced the um, incredible challenge of the pandemic of a century uh, in the past few years. And during that challenge, recognized uh, how uh, incredibly strenuous uh, the task was ahead of our public health workforce in particular. Uh, and how the, the roadblocks uh, and the gaps in public health uh, funding, infrastructure, resources really affected our ability to 
ensure uh, the um, messaging and services uh, and, and best optimal public health uh, service uh, was available to every Marylander. Uh, so I, I, I feel very strongly that this commission has, uh, has a, a wonderful mission uh, and, a, a, and a critically important mission ahead of us, and, and I look forward to being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Ariana Kelly. Thank you so much. Um, so I am in the Maryland Senate. I'm actually one of the sponsors of the, the, of the legislation that established this commission, um, along with Senator Clarence Lamb, who is not officially on the commission, but I'll be communicating back to him to make sure he's abreast of the work that we're doing as well, because he's very interested. Um, I uh, have done a lot of work in the public health space. I used to chair the public health subcommittee when I was in the House. Now the chair of that is Delegate Bagnell, who is also wonderfully on this commission, which is great. It's going to be wonderful to work with her. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Um, thanks so much for including me. Thank you. Dr. Boris Lushniak. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, 27 years of experience uh, in public health. I view myself uh, as a, a physician uh, trained in several areas, but uh, I view myself mostly as a physician who's a public health practitioner. Never had the honor or the pleasure of serving at the local or the state level. So you state and local people are my heroes. But I served in 27 years at the federal level. And why am I here? Because I believe in public health. I believe that despite all the challenges that is in front of us, that we still have the opportunity to change the world. And I think we in particular here at, at Maryland, now that I'm sort of in this academic leadership role, uh, have not only an opportunity, but an obligation to serve our citizens. And at the same time, to provide an example to the rest of the world of how things can get done, how they could ultimately you know, be improved, to be able to, to, to serve as, a, as an example to, to many other jurisdictions. So I'm here with that level of optimism. I always tell my students, if you aren't an optimist, then you shouldn't be in public health because the challenges in front of us are so at times overwhelming that pessimists will wash out early. I'm an optimist and I love joining a group of optimists such as you. Thank you. Dr. Tosin Olateju. Hi everyone, such a pleasure to finally put um, you know, faces to the names. Um, I am very excited to be here with everyone. Um, a little bit about myself, I am a nurse by background. Um, I've had extensive experience in the public health space, specifically in local departments um, in Maryland. Um, and now I'm an educator. I teach as an assistant professor of nursing at Coppin State University. Um, I'm really excited about the work that we're going to do through this commission. Um, we have that unique opportunity to improve uh, public health services and infra infrastructure through our work in this commission. So again, it's such a pleasure. I can't wait for the amazing work that we will do. And as Boris said, cannot wait for us to be the example for other states and even other countries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Frances Phillips. Hi everyone, Fran Phillips here, and uh, it's it's uh, it's a delight to be to be back with some of my uh, former colleagues, and now all of you are my current colleagues in public health. So it's uh, it's a pleasure again to join this group. Uh, I guess our uh, Boris, you asked why am I here? I just can't seem to shake it uh, as far as public health goes. I uh, spent I don't know years and years as a local health officer, and then at, at, at the state level. And uh, I tried to retire twice. It came back. I just can't. Uh, it's in my DNA. So I'm here. So I'm I'm delighted. I'm also I'm also a little bit terrified about the amount of work that needs to get done in the next 12 months. But I know I know we can do this. So so anyway, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nicole Rochester. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am in Prince George's County. I'm a Prince George's County native. Have been here all my life except for when I was training. I'm a pediatrician um, by training, um, left clinical medicine after almost 20 years to start my own health advocacy and consulting company. And my interest in this commission um, is multifaceted, but primarily I'm most interested in um, making sure that health equity is centered in our work. And also I'm really interested in um, the public engagement and making sure that the community and their needs and voices are represented. Thank you. Dr. Michelle Spencer. 
Hi, thanks, Minda. Can I just do a correction to that? It's Miss Spencer, and no doctor, but thank you oh. for that. I appreciate it. Um, and so uh, thanks again for being um, allowing me to be in community with all of you. I think the question was, why am I enthusiastic to be part of this? And I think um, so many of you have already shared. Um, I will just say as a side note, um, I've been working in um, public health and in state and local health departments for a long time in Fran Phillips hired me at the state and then three weeks later decided she wanted to retire for the first time. And so I'm glad to, that Fran is here and that retirement is not holding her back. Um, let me just answer the question and, and, and to, to say that I am a public health practitioner. I am enthusiastic to really be able to think about uh, think about and help shape and reshape portions of our, our public health infrastructure, particularly to address health disparities, health inequities um, in disinvested and under-resourced communities. And thinking about it from the lens of academia, government, and community, and how we use those synergies and the alignment to really transform um, the public health um, infrastructure in our state, and really excited to be part of this community with all of you. Thank you. Mr. Alan Twig. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Alan Twig from Washington County, uh, Western Maryland. Um, I, I share in the enthusiasm and optimism of the group. I've been in uh, really public health, community health over the last 15 years, I helped to co-chair our local health improvement coalition, working with our uh, local Department of Health, uh, truly believe, you know, in the power of change and that we can make improvement. Um, so from mobile mobile health, increasing access to care and how health care is delivered uh, to our communities um, is something that I, I'm very passionate about. Uh, we keep showing up. Uh, we keep uh, working to make a difference, and I'm excited to be uh, serving as part of this group and uh, having uh, to be able to put our stamp uh, on recommendations to make change. So thank you. Thank you. Delegate Heather Bagnall. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm a, a delegate from District 33C. Um, in Anne Arundel County, the Broadneck Peninsula, Severna Park. Um, and I come at this from a very different place. I am I'm the, the, the new uh, chair of the Public Health and Minority Health Disparities Subcommittee, as um, Senator Kelly said. Uh, but my background is in the arts, and, but my passion for public, uh, for public health comes from the transformative nature of it. Um, I took office in 2019, so I had one year under my belt before we were facing, you know, a once in a generation pandemic. Um, and as legislators, we were looking for those silver linings um, in, in, in the midst of this crisis. And I think one of the silver linings is an opportunity to really evaluate how we can do public health better, how we can have a more robust system, how we can prepare, um, learn learn from, from what we did what, as we were building the plane, as we were flying it, as, as the saying goes, but also how we can address those longstanding inequities and really create a, a you know, a, a, a public health system that will meet the needs of, of uh, the 21st century. So I, I view this as as a huge opportunity. I am very much like Dr. Lushniak, a a huge optimist, um, and I know that that with with the right mind uh, working the problem, we can come up with some some really meaningful solutions. And I'm just thrilled to be a part of a part of that process. Thank you, Dr. Nilesh Kalyanaraman. It's good to it's good to see all of you. Um, I, I am here because I love this work. So I'm a, I'm a recovering physician. Um, slowly over time, I uh, realized that, my, that, that where I wanted to spend my time was thinking about not just how do we take care of people today, but how do we take care of people tomorrow? Uh, and, and thinking about what are the systems, systems and approaches to caring for people, uh, not just as individuals, but as community. And so to me, this work is is paramount because we set the stage for the next generation and the generation beyond that. That is exciting. 
Uh, and so, yes, I'm also the Deputy Secretary of Public Health, so I get invited, but it's not why I do this work. So good to be with all of you. Thank you. And I think I saw Ms. Alyssa Lord join. Good afternoon, Alyssa Lord. Uh, I have the honor and privilege of serving as the Deputy Secretary for Behavioral Health for the Maryland Department of Health. And it is nice to be on a call with so many like-minded individuals who are so deeply committed and passionate to public health and um, really underpinning this notion of, of health equity and, and healthcare as a human right or a social justice issue. And how do we think about public health so that we are creating a level of care that everyone is able to access. Um, and so I think the other lens that I'll be looking at this through is through the intersection of the behavioral health continuum of care, which is also inclusive of substance use, um, so that we are recognizing that both the, the needs of our community as it pertains to behavioral health and substance use is very much a public health issue. Thank you. Boris, back to you. Great, thank you. I just want to reconfirm that uh, the uh, uh, that we don't have Jean Drummond on. Is that correct? That no new joining of anyone. We don't have Maura Rossman on, and we don't have Camille Blake Fall on. Okay, just want to make sure that we have our our final uh, attendance. Well, thank you all for that. Just as important to the functioning of this committee, with both the commissioners and the commissioner ex officios are in fact uh, the staff members who are currently assigned to this and this will be ultimately a larger cast of individuals working behind the scenes but i do want uh, everyone to be introduced to our our uh, our staff support and i'll i'll do this in alphabetical order as well so we'll start with um, uh, miss erin mcclure erin Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Erin McClure. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Diversity Dean and Chief of Staff in the School of Public Health. Uh, I share all of your all's passion around public health and am happy to be here and provide support to you all. Great, thank you, Erin. And uh, Ms. Aminda Pulser. Uh, I'm Aminda Pulser. I'm a Program Manager uh, at the School of Public Health at Maryland. Um, also excited to work with you. Great, thank you, Minda. And I believe Joshua Veal is on as well. Joshua. Hi, uh, my name is Joshua Veal. I'm a freshman at Coppin State University providing support to Dr. Olatezu. Uh, I'm currently studying uh, entertainment management. I am currently the president of Coppin's Entertainment Media and Sports Association, as well as the media director for our SASE Models Group. Uh, an acronym that stands for Sustaining an Accountable Safe Space for You. I'm super excited to work with you guys. Great. And Mina, you have an addition as well? Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Bishop uh, from St. Mary's County Health Department. Uh, Dr. Bishop, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself as well. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Brewster. I am Kyle Bishop. I am the Chief of Special Operations at the St. Mary's County Health Department and delighted that Dr. Brewster asked me to join in a support role and happy to be here with all of you. Great. Thank you. Welcome so uh, as well. Uh, and any other staff members who are uh, accompanying any of the individuals here? Okay. So we do want to sort of re recognize the fact that, yes, you know, there there won't be rankism in this group, right? So that's point number one. I'll make it very apparent, right? So let me be very clear in that, you know, staff members play a key role in the functioning of this group. Will they be voting with us? The answer is no, but they are there. They're just as important for us to be able to achieve our goal, as are all the members of this commission. In addition, I also want to put it out there that although all of us have incredible titles in front of our names, uh, I tend to be a rather informal person, right? So if we do use the term inadvertently of, of senator and delegate and doctor, that's fine. That's no problem. But I go by Boris, okay? So if, if you know, if, you know, feel free to just, you know, just use that uh, for, for me. And we can sort of decide on, on your levels of comfort. But I, I'd rather, you know, us not spend too much time on making sure or the worries of make sure we're addressing people properly. We all have done incredible things and and are worthy of our accolades but in this commission we are more worthy of trying to achieve this incredible goal ahead of us 
And speaking of that goal, we actually have sort of two uh, segments of our um, agenda, which I think are critical for us at this inaugural meeting to, to, to begin discussions on. One is so everybody is right off the bat understanding what all this is all about. Uh, Towson has put together a presentation and we'll go through sort of the background of this legislation and where we're all coming. This is critical because some of you are, are obviously intimately involved. You perhaps wrote the legislation. You know all this, but I want to make sure everybody is understanding at the same level. And we have a time period to discuss and answer questions about our mission. Uh, that'll then be followed up with a uh, short discussion about the work groups since we are emphasizing the importance of these work groups and i'll do the intro later for that one so there'll be two presentations back to back and then we'll talk about some action items specifically related to our internal report so i'll hand it over to Towson at this point thank you boris all right i'm going to share my screen now And I will not be able to see everyone while presenting, but if somebody can indicate by voicing that you see the PowerPoint, I would greatly appreciate that. We can see it. <laughs> yes, we can okay. see it. Awesome, awesome. So welcome once again. Um, so this presentation here is entitled the Maryland Public Health Commission. And it's intended to serve as a guide for our operations during the course of our tenure on the Commission of Public Health. So here is a table of contents. We will discuss each item on the next set of slides, but as you can see here, it includes the Commission on Public Health Establishment, um, which encompasses the assessment and recommendations. Um, it includes the report timeline, foundational public health services, commission membership, gubernatorial point appointees, commission co-chairs, work groups, subject matter of work groups, consult and compensation. Here on this slide um, is really, you know, in line with the, with the House Bill 214 that was passed and signed into law on May 3rd by Governor Westmore. The Commission on Public Health is charged to make recommendations to improve public health services within Maryland. To achieve this, the Commission will conduct assessment of foundational public health capabilities of the Maryland Department of Health and local departments as specified and party assessments make recommendations for reform in specified areas. As you can see here, the bill was effective on June 1st, 2023, and it will terminate on June 30, 2025. So talking about the um, assessments, um, the assessment is you know, mainly about the foundational public health capabilities of Maryland Department of Health and local departments, as I've mentioned earlier. Now the commission has three key um, responsibilities with regards to assessment. The first is the commission must explain the impact of foundational public health capabilities on the state's ability to address foundational public health areas that include the foundational public health um, services pertaining to behavioral health and also respond to COVID-19 overdoses, maternal and infant mortality and major public health challenges as appropriate. Secondly, the commission must provide public outreach and hold at least three public meetings in different areas, allowing members of the um, public to, to comment. Thirdly, the commission may request the identified and publicly available data from Maryland Department of Health, local departments, and state designated health data utility, and may also conduct interviews with states and local health officials. So with regards to um, recommendations here, so following the commission's assessment, we as a commission, we are required to make recommendations um, to reform the organization of Maryland Department of Health and local departments, to reform IT information exchange and data and analytics, um, to reform the workforce, um, including human resources and use of medical reserve corps for public health 
to reform pro procurement, including contractor oversight, to reform funding, communication, and public engagement, and any other area of the commission, any other area that the commission considers appropriate. Additionally, um, the commission is required to make recommendations regarding funding and um, legislation required to implement recommendation, if any. Thirdly, the commission must justify how each recommendation contributes to the provision of foundational public health services and make a draft of these recommendations available for public comments for 30 days. Lastly, the commission must be able to use its best efforts to reach consensus on its recommendations. So let's look at our timeline here. Here's our timeline for reporting. An interim report was already submitted by the co-chairs on December 1st, 2023 to meet the stipulated deadline. We will have an opportunity to review the report during this meeting. Our final report will be due on December 1st, 2024. So let's look at foundational public health services. I know we've been talking about it. For the purposes of this presentation, I would abbreviate it as FPHS. So what are foundational public health services, FPHS? So as defined in the 2022 version of the Public Health Accreditation Board standards, the FAB standards, the FPHS are part of a framework that defines a minimum set of capabilities and areas that must be available in every community. The FPHS framework are broken into eight public health infrastructure foundational capabilities and five um, public health programs or foundational areas, which are displayed on the slide. So you can see foundational areas and foundational capabilities. For the foundational areas, that's the one on, on top, we have communicable disease control, communi um, chronic disease and injury prevention, environmental public health, maternal child and family health, and access to and linkage with clinical care. For the foundational capabilities, we have assessment and surveillance, community partnership development, equity, organizational competencies, policy development and support, accountability and performance management, emergency preparedness and response, and lastly, communications. This slide here looks at the list of the commissioners. Um, we have Senator um, Ariana Kelly, we have Delegate Edda Bagnell, we have the Deputy Secretary of um, Public Health in person of Dr. Nilesh Karen Nama, we have the Deputy Secretary for Behavioral Health, um, Ms. Alisa Lord, we have the D Director of Office of Minority Health and Health Disparities, Ms. Camille Blakefall, and other specified members appointed by the Governor. So the next slide will look at the specified members. So here we have Dr. Um, Mina Brewster, we have Dr. Mara Rossman, we have Dr. Gregory Branch, we have Dr. Boris Lukšniak, we have Ms. Ms. Michelle Spencer, we have myself, um, which is Dr. Lateju, we have a member of the public with um, expert in health equity, um, that is Miss Jean Drummond. We have a member of the public with expertise in information technology. Um, that's Mr. Christopher Brandt. We have a member of the public with um, experience in workforce, Mr. Alan Twig. We have a member of the public with experience in population health, Miss Friend Phillips. And we have a member of the public. Um, you know, um, that's Dr. Nicole Rochester. So on this slide, we have the co-chairs, as I've mentioned, that's Mina, Boris, and my humble self. Um, I just want to go back to the slide here. As Boris mentioned, we want to acknowledge the staff support that we have um, on this commission. Um, they will really, really be instrumental 
in the bulk of the work that we do, you might not see um, them, you know, or hear from them um, frequently, but they are doing a lot of work back end. Um, I just want to point out we have support staff from University of Maryland School of Public Health in person of Miss Minder Polster, we have Miss Erin McClure, we have Miss Michelle Kong, support staff from Coppin, um, Mr. Joshua Veal, support staff from St. Mary's County Health Department, Miss Anne Arvey Diggs, and Dr. Carl Bishop. Um, here we have the work groups. As you can see, we are required to have five work groups here and the work groups are including funding, governance, and organizational capa um, capabilities, workforce, data and IT, communication, and public engagement. Of note, each work group must include two members of the commission and members of the public with relevant experience in the subject matter of the work group as specified. This next slide looks at the subject matter of the work group members, primary and specialty care practitioners, payers, consumer advocates, hospital executives, safety net health care providers, public health practitioners, and faith-based organizations. Now, consults. Um, in performing the duties of the commission, the commission shall consult with, as appropriate and necessary, the following organizations. The Maryland Healthcare Commission, the Healthcare Services Cost Review Commission, the Maryland Community Health Resource Commission, the Department of Budget and Management, the Department of General Services, the Maryland Department of Disabilities, the State Designated Health Data Utility, and any other agency as appropriate. This slide here talks about compensation. None of the commission members shall receive compensation. However, commissioners are entitled to reimbursement for expenses under the standard state regulations per state budget. The last slide here, this is where we welcome questions. As you can see on the slide, we have our email. Um, if you have any questions, especially for members of the public, feel free to send us an email md.coph at maryland.gov and we have our website also listed here smchd.org slash commission on public health thank you so much we will now welcome questions great the floor is now open to questions and again uh either use your raise hand function or uh if if no one else is out there just burst in Good. Hi, a quick question. This is Nicole Rochester. I put yeah. in that, um, are we going to be receiving a copy of that presentation? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I think it'll serve as a good primer to have. So, you know, what we've done to date is we'll actually post a lot of things on, you know, on our uh, website, right? Uh, certainly after, certainly any major decisions, but also background information. Uh, we also have the sharing of information, right, Mina, uh, of other methods? Um, correct. Um, so we can distribute information as we have thus far uh, via uh, email, uh, but basic uh, background information uh, are things appropriate for posting on the website as well. Good. And, and an important point to bring up at this point, and we'll be discussing this a little bit regarding our interim report, is uh, not only is it a short timeline to begin with, but guess what, folks? We started late. Um, so uh, even though uh, the commission technically was supposed to be starting around the time period of June 1st, uh, um, you know, and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody's direction here, but you know, a, a lot of us didn't get our appointment letters until October. That being said, it was obviously very difficult to start any commission work until one realized who the commission was. Uh, so one of our uh, proactive uh, requests will, in fact, be asking, and you'll see this in our interim report, and we'll be asking for the board's opinion on this uh, as to whether the timeline as it currently stands needs to be uh, looked at because of the late start. Uh, as Fran had mentioned, you know, I, I think all of us get a little overwhelmed thinking, oh, my gosh, uh, you know, the work groups really will spend a lot of time doing a lot of the work so the commission will be in, ac in essence analyzing work group but don't forget all of us are two members uh, are on each of the the work groups so we're going to be divided so we're going to be part of work groups as well as the commission 
And at the same time, we have to be able to move ahead. And we'll talk about some of the issues that we've run into already in terms of resources available to this commission that we're trying to, to make do, but we, we have some at least paths forward that we'd like the commission to opine on as well. But that being said, we are cognizant of the fact that, you know, um, that things didn't get started. I mean, this is December 14th and this is our first meeting, right? Uh, we are, again, trying to work very hard in 2024, but we also want a quality product at the end of all this. And, and uh, the last thing we want to do is to feel rushed and settle for mediocrity here. Um, if there are uh, any other further questions about this, yes, Fran? Yeah, thank you, Boris. Um, just to be to be real quick, uh, thank you for that overview and uh, for all the prep work that obviously that that all the co-chairs have put into um, into uh, the launch today, uh, including the agenda, I, um, the schedule of meetings uh, for the entire next year. Um, I did see that the requirement that we have at least three public meetings. Um, I'm I'm assuming that that's n that's in addition to what's on that agenda, right? So we're going to do we're going to yes. go on the road, and we're going to have some other opportunities to get public input in person. Right. In addition Absolutely. to these, okay, good. Okay, yes. without a doubt, Fran, and we'll likely put that on our next meeting agenda to be able to start okay. looking through both in terms of ideas. You know, the co-chairs have had some preliminary discussions of ideas of you know how this this could be conducted, but you know. There, there are several tasking, one of which is we're, we're going to be monitoring to make sure that we do a check mark next to every requirement in, in, in Tosin's presentation, right? So that we don't blow it in terms of, you know, not meeting those requirements. But, but it goes beyond that, obviously, it's going to be the work of both assessment and, and recommendations as well. And a lot of that will, once again, you know, there's only so much we can do as a full commission. We really have to rely on ultimately what the work groups are going to be conducting, right? And, and what I see, I think what we all see, and I'd like you know opinions from the commission as well, is is the brunt of this is going to be done at the work group level, right? Who are now the specialty subgroups that will have hopefully specialists assigned to them. We'll look at this whole idea of what are the capabilities for assessment, et cetera. But ultimately, you know, those are the, the arenas that are going to be ultimately reporting back to the commission of successes and failures throughout this whole route. We then will take the show on the road more so as listening sessions, right? I mean, part of it is I think the, the way the, the three, you know, uh, uh, geographically the, the diverse uh, public outreach is really to explain what the commission is. Uh, but also then to say, what's public health done for you lately, right? I mean, you know, and what's your attitude towards public health, right? And again, you know, this is just off the top of my head, but we will have very set uh, and well choreographed uh, agendas for those meetings. Great, great. Thank, thank, thank you. Any other questions from the group? Great. Well, I did the prelude already a little bit about how important and the important role we're, we're putting on the shoulders of the, the work groups. And uh, Mina uh, will do a, a short discussion of that, and then we'll lead that up to discussion as well. So Mina, take over here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, Tosin, appreciate the uh, overview of the commission's task ahead. Uh, for the work groups, uh, thank you to all the commission members who uh, completed the uh, requested information intake, uh, your interest, expression of interest in the different work groups. Uh, that was very helpful. Uh, you, you have seen now that uh, each of the commission members have been assigned to their, uh, hopefully their preferred work group, if not their number one, at least their number two. Uh, the, we are held to the task of the legislation that requires at least two commission members in each of the work groups. Uh, so that influenced some of the assignments as well. Um, those work group assignments are listed in the interim report under the bio section. Uh, so if you reference the interim report that you've all received electronically and that's posted publicly on our webpage, uh, the work group assignments are, are there uh, in the bio section. Uh, we are in the process uh, of uh, requesting expressions of interest from the public uh, for work groups, uh, the five work groups that Tosin outlined in her presentation. The applications are due tomorrow by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and as we've indicated in, in prior communication, we would very much appreciate the commission members advancing uh, notice about the work group application uh, and deadline and so forth to uh, those in your, uh, in your sphere, in your realm, and, and specifically 
uh, individuals who have experience relevant to each of the five uh, work groups. Um, after closure of the application uh, for our public member involvement in the work groups, uh, the co-chairs will gather to review those applications and make um, assignments based on individuals' expression of interest uh, for the five uh, different work groups and communicate that back uh, to the commission uh, members. Uh, the co-chairs will also be designating the uh, individual work group co-chairs as well. Uh, so there'll be two co-chairs for each of the five work groups and that those co-chairs will then uh, serve as the conveners of their um, uh, public member group uh, and uh, be responsible for communicating directly with uh, the individuals in those work groups. Uh, we anticipate from a communication standpoint, we anticipate that uh, the, as, as Boris was mentioning, the work groups are going to be the uh, major workhorses of this commission and the combined expertise of the work group members uh, will be incredibly robust, I, I believe, and, and uh, uh, incredibly beneficial to this process of analyzing Maryland's public health uh, capabilities and also making recommendations for reform. Uh, and so the, uh, we, we expect that the work groups will likely need to meet on a regular basis and uh, you know, anticipate that based on the, sta the stage of analysis and the stage of uh, uh, identifying recommendations that work groups may be meeting uh, once or twice monthly uh, even uh, to get uh, the work done. Uh, so we really appreciate, we realize this is a significant time investment because we also have monthly meetings of these uh, commission, of the whole commission uh, and uh, for work group meetings as well, there's additional times of gathering and work associated with that. Uh, we, we realize that this commitment is heavy, but the mission is so critical and so important and so relevant to the lives of every single Marylander uh, that we, we just uh, very much appreciate all the time being invested um, in this work. Thank you, Boris. Great. Um, and again, a lot uh, that we'll continue to discuss at our next meeting on January 4th, uh, pending sort of us looking at the final closure of the applications. Once again, one last plea. We have roughly 24 hours. So if you have a network that you've not gone through, we do have the press release available. I think it's on our website as well that you can uh, copy, paste and copy. I, for example, a few weeks ago, you know, sent it to my faculty and staff here at the university, basically saying, isn't it great news that we have this opportunity? And so therefore, no pressure, but those of you who are interested in serving your state, please join up. And, and you know, we had a handful of individuals basically who would do that. Uh, again, non-pressure situations, but if you have specific networks or specific individuals that you think would be a good fit for one of the five subject areas, uh, please submit them or ask them to submit an application. Uh, as mentioned, you know, at some point we are, as we look through this group, and we already contacted a handful of individuals potentially already, is to look at the designation of co-chairs. Uh, what we're asking probably is that, you know, that we as commissioners are members of the committee, but in order to spread the workload, I would, unless you are really uh, ready to take on the, the role of co-chair, that we probably say be a commissioner on that uh, on that committee and 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 you know if you want to volunteer to be a co-chair do send us an email but otherwise we'll be looking towards spreading the wealth of leadership a little bit here so uh, i think that's that's been our attitude but again you know to let us know if you're interested uh, for your assigned work groups to actually be one of the co-chairs um any questions about the work groups and the scenarios and again we'll have more information as we get to our next meeting of the commission There being none, we'll push ahead. Good. Uh, we're at the point right now of 3.56, so we have roughly 30 minutes left. How time flies when you're having fun. I'm going to ask individuals if you are able to get up and stretch uh, because sitting is not really that good for you. Uh, if you have some refreshments, I have some water here. A sip of uh, hydration and all that uh, is important. Oh, it feels good to get up. Uh, because we are public health people, so we got to do this every so often, if nothing else, for the record. So let's note that in the record, Minda, for the minutes that we did have a stretching uh, time period, because we are the Commission on Public Health. 
very critical that we practice what we preach. Um, as you're still stretching, oh, Amanda gave me a thumbs up. That's so cool. Um, we're going to get through sort of progress updates, uh, at, which is the next part of our agenda. And in particular, I just want to brief you on the status of what was a, a requirement uh, of us to submit an interim report by December 1st, 2023. Now, you understand sort of the difficulty of doing that uh, in that our first meeting didn't take place until December 14th. So you do the math. <laughs> Uh, and yet our decision, both Thompson and Mina and I, and you can tell we're probably little kids who always like to turn their homework in on time, right? Uh, was that we have to submit something, otherwise, you know, we're not meeting the uh, the letter of the, uh, the requirements of the piece of legislation. Uh, that being said, what we did was we submitted something that talked about <laughs> our progress to date, which I'll relate to you shortly, that's in the report. Uh, we called it an interim report. We dated it December 1st. It was in fact sent out, you know, in, on the evening of December 1st. Um, you know, you get three co-chairs together and it was an amazing uh, co cooperative effort. But at some point, you know, I'm not sure if it was Tassin or, or, or Mina that pressed the button somewhere at 6 or 7 p.m. that night on, on the Friday to get it out. Uh, so we got it out in time. Uh, that being said, we did it with all full uh, transparency, which is it's submitted on behalf of the co-chairs, is what the interim says, to be presented for adoption by the full commission on December 14, 2023. So our next matter is for us to actually look at this interim report. I'm going to go through some of the highlights, which there shouldn't be much controversy over, but I'm going to get and end up on, on what we decided to put in there. A, a new section that was called at one time recommendations and now we're putting recommendations and comments and and that i i would say is the, the area that we need to sort of emphasize today just so you understand where we've seen some potential vulnerabilities that at least we want to share this uh with our uh reporting chain i.e the governor and and uh the legislative leaders uh but let me first start with a component of the interim report and the interim report uh was um was uh very well organized it talked about the overview of the commission it talked about the membership it included the bios uh it talked about the work of the commission and in essence uh let me just tell you about what we did prior to december 1st is the co-chairs uh, have you know held three meetings and began work on setting meeting days for december 2023 and for calendar year 2024 we established mechanisms of communications within the commission, assigning commission members to the work groups and preparing the interim report. Uh, we also uh, were meeting the, the legislative requirements uh, according to the legislature that staffing for the commission would come from the two academic institutions who serve as, as co-chairs, i.e. Coppin State and the University of Maryland at College Park. You've met some of the staff here already. Uh, we also had support staff identified from St. Mary's County as well. Uh, that wasn't part of the provision, but we were basically looking for all hands on deck, as many people as we can get to assist us in this whole process. Uh, a press release was issued on November 14th, uh, seeking subject matter experts for the five work groups. Uh, and so that was put out and that was part of our report in terms of progress updates. Uh, so as you can see, this, this meeting was not included because we're still dating it December 1st. Uh, we do want to send in a revised report and we'll get go into this, this thing that's being broadcast right now. Uh, but let me talk a little bit about prior to this about commission needs. Uh, and, and, and this is critical, right? Um, and I'm going to be very open with you, right? Is when this legislation was passed, I was amongst those supporting it, right? the dean of the school of public health at the university of maryland was there in annapolis saying let's go for this uh one of the features that was always a, a controversial part of this and, and the legislators present the senators and the a senator and delegate understands this that there was no money put into this this was in essence to be staffed by the academic institutions that will move ahead and uh, the reality is that to be able to conduct the work appropriately and there's two components to this. Second component is recommendations. Well, we can all come up with recommendations, but recommendations cannot occur 
uh, in the vacuum outside of having the assessments done. And we are worried on that front end of both the timeline of having adequate assessments, but also the technical staffing necessary for those types of assessments. So uh, what we've done in terms of looking at commission needs uh, is looking at uh, seeking financial support mechanisms. One of the ways that we're not attending, intending to do this is to go back to the state to say, hey, state, you know, we now realize you should have given us a bunch of money and you didn't. We're not doing that. Uh, I, I call that sometimes the chasm or the valley of death of state funding, right? There are other, you know, there are lots of priorities out there. But one of the issues right now is we have a job to do and we have potential mechanisms to get that job done. There's no dedicated state funding to support the analysis conducted by the commission, but the commission believes that there may be opportunities in public health foundation level support through grant mechanisms to support its work. And what I want to report to you, to you already is that the co-chairs uh, have already reached out to some potential partners. Uh, I will name them as, you know, well, lo let me hold off the names at this point until we, we move further in the process. But foundations who have done quintessential work and support in the area of assessments, they have worked at other states. We are looking at what other state models have been for these types of assessments. Uh, and, and what we did is we were, in essence, identifying a gap in, in terms of our capabilities, but also wanting uh, the, the commission to understand that the co-chairs with your blessing, and we'll put in a motion shortly about this, is for us to continue these discussions with foundation and outside support mechanisms to help us in our work. Uh, we're also requesting in, 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 in the recommendations and comments, not so much money from the state as support on a technology front. And I realize sometimes that support equates to people's you know, time put into an effort but what we're asking for is relatively simple measures, and that includes Maryland.gov emails, if possible, uh, helping us with the website. As you can see, Mina was kind enough to actually offer St. Mary's County as the home of the website. We would love to, to you know, not to put the burden just on St. Mary's County to actually make it a statewide. We have something there. We needed to do something. Mina did a great job in terms of getting her staff to be able to get something online quickly, to have an email put on quickly, but we're looking for further IT support on this, right? If nothing else is, this opens up more transparency and potential connectivity with the public. So those are amongst the areas that we're looking in terms of commission needs, i.e. the technical support aspects and funding the technical support aspects of assessments and the idea of IT support. Uh, Mina or, or Tassin, do you want to add anything from your perspectives on that before we open up to this the discussion? You, you did a fine job. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it was you know, wonderful. Thank you. I don't have anything to add. Thanks. Great. Uh, questions or comments from, from the, the commission on this? Okay, if not, I just want to sort of relate to you that this is in fact reflected in what is a, a an action item that I'd like to present is that uh, the, the change that we'd like to put in, uh, we had come up with a listing in the original draft that's on the website and was sent to the state of listing recommendations to the state. Uh, there's two changes that we wanted to make. One was there was a provision number four under the recommendations that requested that, that that the commission was requesting the Maryland Department of Health uh, Deputy Secretary of Public Health to be designated as a secretary for the commission. Uh, upon further discussion, I think what we have already is we have that position as an ex officio. There had been a model in the state of Indiana to have the state authority in as a secretary position for the commission we were trying to mimic that to some extent on further discussion we deem that we our working model probably can work without that provision and without having that a sort of extra uh, assignment or burden placed upon the maryland department of health to designate uh, that individual i think we're going to have a good working relationship with the department of health without that uh, so we're asking that the ultimately that that provision formerly known as number four in the previous rendition of this uh would be dropped uh and so now what we have is uh, a changeover of what was formerly provision number five 
which is asking the state not so much for money, but recognize the contributions. I felt and the other uh, co-chairs felt a little bit uncomfortable in that we were relying on local health departments and uh, the Maryland Department of Health to assist us in some of the staffing capabilities. Now, does that mean money? Well, the answer is in a indirect sort of way, it means that people are going to be working on this commission. And we just wanted to make sure that uh, the state authorities understood that state individuals, uh, state officers were, were working on this project and that we recognize that their contributions are part of this commission. So uh, what I'd like to do is that uh, the original interim report, which we wanna now, after this meeting, label as approved by the commission uh, is the same one that was offered initially, except that we're changing recommendations to both recommendations and comments. We're dropping one of the recommendations and we're re rewording another one, not to denote the exchange of any funding from the state level. So um, any questions or comments on this listing of recommendations and comments that we'd like to inc include in the December 1st report? Or, or Mina or Towson, I'll first give you as co-chairs anything to add from your perspectives on these recommendations and comments. Nothing to add, Boris, thank you. Nothing to add as well, okay. thanks. So open up the discussion right now about this. clear to everybody about, about where we're heading to on, on this uh, report. Ariana, do you have something? I saw you come back on. Yeah, no, I just popped my hand up. Uh, yeah. Just because I didn't want you to get no feedback, I think it sounds fine. I think it seems reasonable and I appreciate your work on it. Good, you know, and I especially wanted your input because, you know, again, I, I know how things can go. Let's be honest, you know, that oftentimes if we go back and say, oh, we need a ton of money, you know, that, that sometimes is not the way to, to get progress here. Here, I just want yeah, to make sure that, that the commission understands several things. State people are working on this, right? And, and that's, I think, almost part of their jobs or other duties as this assigned. The other aspect is that we are, as, as at least the co-chairs, and everything will be vetted with the, you know, with the commission, is we are looking for uh, that getting that technical support and potential some funding support from outside foundations. You know, allow us to do that, or at least you're aware that we're doing that. Uh, we have a comment now from Nicole and then one from Fran. Nicole. Yes, I just want to echo what was just said. You know, thank you for the hard work that you all have already done prior to this meeting and to just amplify what you just reiterated, which is the need for funding. I looked over the report that you all shared from Indiana and they got $250,000 in grant funding for their efforts. So to expect that we will be able to pull this off, you know, like you said, it's one thing to have recommendations, but um, I think it would be incredibly, I know it would be incredibly frustrating, not only for us, but for the communities that we serve to have come up with an amazing list of recommendations after a year's worth of work and then have no, no funding to either support, you know, our work and the analysis and also the implementation. So I'm just amplifying your your um, recommendation for funding. And I, I sincerely hope that we're successful in that. Thank you. Great, thank you, Nicole. Fran? Uh, well, just to kind of tee off what Nicole just, um, just said, uh, I, I do agree. And, and I think recommendation slash comment number two goes to the heart of the need for more funding. Um, my my comment here is not to wordsmith it, but the 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 the, the the way it's written, it looks like there's an opportunity. The, 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 the where the money is is kind of limited to an op opportunities in public health foundation level uh, support. And so I would maybe think that that could be tweaked. That sentence could be tweaked just a little bit to make the opportunities more broad. I mean, that's that's abs absolutely where Indiana went, but there might be some other opportunities um, here in Maryland. So. With that, I would just say uh, in that in that in recommendation number two, in that sentence, um, you know, about the, the third line in the commission believes that there may be opportunities, comma, including those including in public health foundation in public health foundation level, um, including public health foundation level support comma through grant mechan uh, through grant me mechanisms. In other words, 
uh, let's just not limit ourselves, right? So yeah. just, you, you see what I'm trying to say? Just I don't want to wordsmith it in, in the whole commission meeting, but I just think it could be a little bit broader. Right. Thank you. Good. Yes, Mina. Uh, great. Thank you. And, and appreciate all the comments uh, that have been provided already. Um, <clears throat> when it's an appropriate time, once everybody has had a chance to reflect on this, it would be good to, um, yeah, to, to formally go through a process of emotion and, and discussion and adoption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll do that shortly. I know Robert's rules and orders means, you know, we had a proposal and all that. There's an ad amendment put in. I know we should have sort of talked about, I know there's sort of different steps on this. I'm trying to get us again. We're not into wordsmithing right now, but that is, I think, a nice little provision that that's thrown in there. So we will at, at some point have a motion once uh, comment here. You're, you're absolutely right. So let, let me break in right now. Mina has a good point. So there is a with, with this revision, there's a motion to approve this by the commission, this wording. And now let's open it up to comment. No, first, we have to have a motion. Mina, help me out here. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll make a motion uh, that the uh, commission approves the interim report as drafted by the co-chairs and as amended uh, by this, uh, what you see on the screen and as amended <laughs> by uh, what uh, uh, Fran Phillips uh, indicated. Uh, so now the final version uh, would be what you see on the screen uh, to replace the prior recommendations. Right. And is there a second? And then we have discussion. Correct? I will second there. Okay, great. Thanks, Nilesh. And we have a comment from Chris. Uh, just a more of a question. Do, do you have a so? I mean, you, you referenced the the two hundred fifty thousand dollars that funded the Indiana report. Do you have a sense of the magnitude of funding that that we need? And and is the work like? Does that funding? Do we select people to go and do that work, or is it? Is it going to be done by the universities with their big overhead? Mina, why don't you start at least uh, talking about our lease pathway? Sure. Thank you. And thanks for raising the topic. I think uh, it's important to understand, uh, you know, Indiana is an example of one state that's gone through this process. There are others, but uh, nationally, uh, at least within, you know, the, the realm of public health um, uh, reform, uh, Indiana is being held as a, a kind of a gold standard of, of how a state can approach this process. Um, the Indiana process was uh, quite different than how things are laid out in front of us. The Indiana process involved uh, a foundation, uh, you know, associated with a, a university conducting a statewide analysis on public health foundational capabilities prior to the launch of the Indiana Commission. Uh, so that was essentially that analysis that we are now tasking over the next uh, handful of months to our work groups was already conducted prior to the launch of the Indiana Commission. Uh, and then once the Indiana Commission was launched, uh, the there were additional grant funds designated. So there was 250K mentioned. There were actually, I believe, in addition to the 250K, some additional grant funds that came through later to support the work of the commission. The commission in Indiana had approximately a year to digest, uh, to conduct additional analysis and make recommendations for reform after the statewide analysis was conducted. We have 11 months essentially, or 12 months, I guess, if you count the beginning of December, uh, to uh, conduct both the analysis as well as make the recommendations for reform into a report. Um, so it's uh, quite a uh, quite a task ahead of us uh, without the benefit of the in-kind analysis, as well as the um, hundreds of thousands of dollars of funding uh, that the Indiana process utilized. Um, I think the, you know, it, it's difficult to project how much a process in Maryland may cost, but we, um, we know we, we don't want to just do uh, the work. We want to lead uh, the work, this work, and create a, an example for the nation. Uh, and so we want to do it well. Fortunately, in Maryland, we've got some wonderful resources, both academic and otherwise, uh, to support the work. Uh, and I believe uh, we we have a lot of um, outside entities who are also uh, committed to uh, helping our mission become successful. Uh, so I, I think 
um, you know, we, we may be talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars to ensure that we have the, the uh, you know, the workhorses really to support each of the work groups uh, in their work so that the volunteer members of the work groups can focus on analyzing, digesting, and uh, making recommendations for reform. Uh, and, and of course, that uh, we, we think that will require uh, a, a concerted um, effort and, and group of uh, resources. Great, thank you, Mina. Heather, you had a question, comment? Thank you. I just I just wanted to to get a little bit of clarification on what we're talking about, um, because it is it is it that you are seeking funds to for the work groups to make recommendations, or you would be seeking funds to support the recommendations of the work groups and the commission, because seeking funds is a whole separate effort, and given the time. The timeline that we're operating under, I, I think that raises some concerns about um, about being able to 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 meet the, the the charge of the commission in in the timetable that we are discussing. So, if I could just get some some clarity on what what that what that recommendation um, uh, really really encompasses. Go on, Mina. Um, thank you. That's an excellent, uh, excellent point and, and question. And, and delegate, it's great to see you again. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I believe at least, uh, and, and please, uh, Tosin and Boris uh, uh, chime in. Um, our, our thinking on this is that in order to conduct a very thorough analysis that is uh, gathering all the input and data and analyzing that input and data as we need, um, to to have a thorough analysis, which then guides the recommendations for reform, it would uh, be incredibly beneficial for us to have dedicated, uh, uh, you know, expert staff essentially, or dedicated expert consultants, or whatever it might be, to support each of the work groups. So the burden of of the work uh, and kind of the day to day uh, analysis work, the formulation of analysis, the conducting of analysis. Um, is is not as much on the volunteer workgroup members. Uh, the volunteer workgroup members can be there more to guide the work and to uh, formulate recommendations from that analysis. Uh, and so uh, that so so the funding to answer your question directly, the funding is would hopefully be able to support uh, a level of expertise staffing for each of the work groups. Uh, to conduct the work of the work groups under the guidance of the work group members. Uh, the second part of what you asked about was implementation of the recommendations from the commission. Uh, and uh, that that is not what we're seeking funding for at this point in time. Uh, but we hope that that happens at some point in the future once those recommendations are there. Yeah, our tasking, our recommendations, right? I, I think at some stage, you know, that will have to be discussed at a whole different level. But thank you for that question. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention also, the first provision here is because we started six months late and because the legislation actually runs until uh, June 30th, 2025, we are asking for an extension uh, and that may take a legislative change. So we may have to go back to the, the committees basically saying we is, you know, we started six months late and we're asking for an extension to, you know, for the final report for six months. That gives us at least a little bit more time and, and we'll see how that goes in terms of a recommendation. But anyhow, so we still have uh, any further discussion on this before or prior to vote. We have the motion, we have a second for that motion. And now any other further discussion? If not, uh, all four of uh, us submitting this report as amended and as stated here, please raise your hands and say aye. 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 Okay. Any against? Any nays? Any abstain ab abstaining? Okay, so we will send uh, this final report with these amendments uh, and uh, make the changes both on the website and revise this to our reporting authorities at the state level. Uh, the next action item as we approach nine minutes left is to look at and for the uh, commission to okay the listing of the meeting schedule for 2024. All of you should have received it, 12 dates in 2024. I'll remind you, this is for the full commission. 
Uh, I'll also remind you that uh, we are ch chosen a location uh, to be hosted uh, at uh, the Baltimore County Department of Health. There is parking there available. Uh, and uh, we do encourage people, if possible at all, to be there in person as much as possible. We'd like to have sort of old fashioned meetings, but obviously we will have the hybrid approach. And so these are the presumed dates. We're trying to keep a pattern of the first Thursday afternoon of the month with the exception of July. So can I have a motion to approve uh, this uh, schedule of events for 2024? I move to approve the schedule of events for the Commission on Public Health. For do we have a second? A second. This is Brian. Okay. Do we have any discussion of this motion? If there being none, all four, please uh, state your hands up and say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstaining? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. The last order, I'm, I'm going to verbalize a motion uh, which we, we can write out, but, but listen carefully because it's not that that long or complex. But it goes back to this idea of expert collaboration. And we just want to be uh, the co-chairs, uh, get your okay, that in essence, I'd like to propose a motion to give co-chairs the ability to reach out to collaborative parties who have expertise in analyzing Maryland public health data. Uh, this sounds like a simple motion, but it, it, it does empower us to at least say that we've discussed this at your list. It is tied in with one of the recommendations slightly talking about us going out for foundation support, but also we want to begin, if we are able to, not only get that foundation support, but begin talking with those technical experts uh, who may be able to assist us um, uh, in this realm. So the motion again is to give co-chairs the ability to reach out to collaborative parties who have expertise in analyzing Maryland public health data. Any um, any uh, motion to approve? Does anybody? Uh, I move to approve. Thank you. Any I second? second? I second. Second. Any any discussion on that? Yes, Mina. Um, thank you, Boris. I, what I would also recommend is uh, so that we, uh, you know, I, I don't know if the word Maryland is necessary in there um, or if it's more the analysis of public health uh, data and infrastructure. Okay. I think that's a good point. Again, we don't want to necessarily limit ourselves to basically have to talk just with people who are specific to Maryland. So I, you know, as amended, Maryland motion to give chairs the ability to reach out to collaborative parties who have expertise in analyzing public health data and infrastructures. Any comments? Okay. Uh, we have a motion, we have a second. We had a discussion with a slight amendment. I know we should have gone back in time, but are, are we ready to vote on this? Uh, are people supportive? Everybody uh, who supports this say aye and raise your hands. Aye. 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 And any abstaining? Good. Well, those are the action items. Uh, the announcement, any new business, anything else that some anyone wants to bring up at this stage? Okay, yes, Mina? Um, just uh, again, announcement based on the approval of the 2024 meeting schedule. Our next meeting would be January 4th uh, from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Baltimore County Department of Health with a virtual option. And if I may, I, I just want to extend a, uh, a deep appreciation and thank you to Dr. Branch uh, and his team at the Baltimore County Department of Health for offering uh, their facilities uh, to host the Commission on Public Health meetings. You're most welcome. Great. We're looking forward to visiting with you. Good. Uh, that's it for announcements. Anybody else have any announcements out there? Well, this has been a good start today. Um, thank you all for your time period. Notice that our next meeting will be longer and that we're envisioning both a commission meeting and perhaps at least the some sort of connectivity, perhaps with a non-commission meeting, but with a connectivity with the work groups already. 
at least you know at, at commission level and and perhaps work group chairs but we'll we'll have to design that as you know the holiday season is soon upon us and it's very difficult to organize things uh, in the next few weeks here but it, we're, we'll push ahead uh, i thank you first of all for your passion i thank you for your attendance here today i thank you for your ideas and and your perspectives uh, I'm also uh, thankful of having the two excellent co-chairs that uh, that uh, I'm blessed to work with uh, and blessed to work with all of you. I wish you all uh, a great holiday season um, and and soon it will be 2024. And despite all the, the, the crises and the issues in the world, we always have to look at, the, you know, at, 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 we have to find the light, don't we? And so let's continue to find that light on, on, in, in our public health mission. So uh, I'm asking for a motion to adjourn today's meeting. I move, move to adjourn. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, everybody for? Aye. Anyone Aye. against? Anyone abstaining? Okay, for the record, meeting was concluded at 428 on December 14th. Thank you all. We'll see you see you at hopefully in person at Baltimore County Department of Health. If not, uh, we'll be online January 4th uh, between 2 and 5 p.m. Uh, we'll have many more things to discuss at that point. But in addition, uh, we'll all be fresh after having uh, hopefully some time off. Take care of yourselves during this holiday season. Take a little bit of break. Enjoy time with loved ones. Uh, that keeps us all moving, doesn't it? So thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Bye, everyone.